when I first got my CNC router, I was really unsure where to start. Uh, it was a little bit confusing, a little bit intimidating. I'm sure uh, if you're thinking about getting a CNC router, you're in the same boat. So I decided to do a series here on just kind of the startup and get going type of procedures that you need to do when uh, using a CNC router. And the router I have is a Shapeoko 3. Um, this may not apply if you don't have that. The, that company has a software car called Carbide Create. And so that's what I'm going to be showing you how to use. I believe it's a f actually free to use for anyone, if, even if you didn't buy their CNC router. Um, so we're going to show you that. Today I'm just going to get into just how to set up your workpiece in the software and to get it ready to start cutting out. So let's get started. So I wanted to show you around the Carbide Create software. I know when I first got my CNC machine, it was a little confusing. So I thought this would help. So let's just start at the beginning here in the setup. Um, by the way, this is Carbide Create Build 743, so uh, if, if you're watching this at a later date, some of these things may change a little bit. But the first thing you want to do is you're going to come in and set up the job size. So this is the, whatever size piece you're going to be cutting out on your CNC machine. You can change these. They're in inches right now. I, you can change the units to metric if you want to. Um, so let's just stay with a 12 inch by 12 inch piece for now um, and then you also need to set the thickness of your piece so most of the things i use are three quarters of an inch and you have to also set when where zero is on the z-axis which is um, the depth of the cut so <clears throat> We want to. I usually set mine as the top because uh, you want to. It's easier. You, you can set the depth of the machine for for each new piece based on the top of the workpiece. Um, I usually use a piece of paper underneath the bit and bring the bit down until the paper doesn't move anymore. So. Uh, you set those things. A lot of times, once you set these, they stay that way until um, until you change them. So, and then the other thing you got to decide is where is your zero point going to be, as in the origin point on your workpiece. So, so this kind of depends a little bit on what you're cutting out. Um, sometimes I choose lower left. Sometimes I choose center. Uh, it just depends. So if it was center, you would just want to mark the center point of your workpiece. And then when you set your origin point to the zero, 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 um, that you would ha just have to have a point in the center of your workpiece. Try to get it as dead center as possible uh, to make that work. So um, if you don't want to set a center for some reason, um, like I said, lower left seems to be, for me at least, easier. Uh, I always mount my, I always mount my workpiece in the lower left corner of my machining bed, so it just feels natural to to set it there. Um, in addition, if I did center left where I have my CNC, it would be kind of hard for me to reach it. So. Um, like I said, I usually use lower left or center for my um, origin point. So, and then uh, you're going to choose what kind of piece of uh, material you're going to be using. Hardwood, softwood, hard, hard plastic, aluminum, soft plastic. So, um, it just depends. Let's say we're cutting pine out. We'll just leave it, leave it at softwood. Then your machine, you need to choose your machine. It's, this just depends on what machine you're using. 
Um, I have a Shiboko 3, so that's what my machine is. And then retract height. So when you're cutting out, your retract height is how much your bit comes back up above the workpiece when it moves to the next uh, point. The higher this is, the longer it takes to cut out because it's always moving back up that distance every time it's it's changing position without making a cut. So uh, I don't remember if this is the default setting, uh, the one eighth of an inch. But I do remember when I first got my machine that I felt like it was retracting so much and I just, it takes so long. And when it retracts, it seems like it moves a little slower. So I do remember decreasing that number, but I can't say for sure what it is. I'm actually showing you this on my home computer, which is not connected to my CNC machine. So I would have to go to my shop and look and I don't recall. Find something that you feel is good, but don't make it so low of a number that there's a chance that when it retracts, it hits a spot on your workpiece um, as it moves to a new, different point. So uh, you're going to have to figure that out. Uh, you can always just stick with the default and it'll be fine, but um, you may want to change it. And then as we saw earlier here, the units, um, we have it as an inch. So... We're going to roll with that and take notice, see this little red thing down here? Um, that is where the origin point is. And I switched, and it, so it was set at lower left. I switched it to center. So you'll see this red circle move to the center of the screen. And that was just always just a little reminder as you're designing this and cutting things out that your origin is at the center. So uh, if you ever see that and wonder why it's on there, that's what it is. So now you can see it's up here, center of the screen. All right, so that's the setup. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is set your grid. Um, I assume you want a grid. If you don't, it makes it a little bit hard to line things up sometimes. So my current grid is set at a quarter of an inch. And you can see along the top of my work area and along the left side, there is actually a ruler. And it, it tells you where your cursor is at any point in time. So I'm going to hit cancel here for a second. And you'll see the red line moves depending on where my cursor is. I believe there's a snap as well. Snap to grid. Okay, so the snap to grid... Um, that's only when you're actually using one of these create type tools like circles and stuff. So, um, it can free move when you don't have that snap or when you aren't creating something. So let's go back to set up grid and you're just going to have to determine what your spacing needs to be. And there's times where I'll change this in the middle of design. Um, maybe I have it set at 0.25 but I really want to get a little more precise when I move something and I'll reduce it down if I need to so uh, we'll leave it at 0.25 right now and um, and, and also uh, sometimes I want to count I, I want to make sure my work piece is a certain or I don't start cutting until maybe I'm three-fourths of an inch off of the edge so I sometimes it's hard to see when you have a smaller grid spacing. So I may reduce it, or I may change that to um, 0.75 so I can actually see that, okay, this is exactly where I wanna be. Um, I don't want anything outside of this area. So sometimes I'll do that if I wanna do like a round over um, or some kind of router profile on the outside edge after I'm done cutting. I don't want whatever my CNC work is to crowd that. So. Um, so there's just there's certain times where you may want to change that throughout the design process. Now, edit background. You can actually load an image in. So let's just see here. I will go get one of my logos.
Okay, so it made it very large. So with the background, set background feature, um, you, you could use it to trace things if you wanted to. Uh, I really personally never use this feature. Um, I honestly don't see the point in it. Uh, there's so many other ways to, to get an image into your, your workspace that I, personally I won't use it. You may find a use for it, but that's just me. You can also use a measure tool to measure certain points, and it'll tell you the distance. It may come in handy at certain times. So that's the basic setup of the drawing. One other thing you're going to want to do when you're setting up a file, or actually setting up this software in general, is you're going to want to set up your tool database. Now. It comes with all these cutting tools default in here. So if you were just using the Carbide 3D brand bits and you wanted to cut into hardwood, it has all their end mills and their feeds and speeds. Uh, it has, um, you know, you can go to softwoods, end mills, feeds and speeds, ball mills, V grooves engravers it has all that stuff already in there uh, if you want to add anything that maybe you bought a bit from a different company you can actually add them in here by creating a new library you can set the material to whatever you want so that when you go set the material at the beginning of your file creation uh, you can set it to whatever you're using um, you can preset your machine and then you can call it uh, whatever name you want. And it creates this new tool uh, library down here. And then you can add bits. So um, this obviously doesn't have anything in it. But you can go to new tool by right clicking. And then you can decide, you know, I want to make an end mill. And then you can fill out all the information of that bit. And you can usually get those that information off of the manufacturer of the bit or, or wherever you purchase the bit. And a lot of times they'll have feed and speed, you know, and things like that. Diameter of the bit. Uh, you can set a tool number. Provide all the information you, you need. Usually the, just the end mill bits are pretty easy to set up. It's the V grooves that, that start getting a little... Um, different because you have angles you have to add and, um, and things like that so uh, it's just a little bit of a difference when you're setting those up but I highly recommend setting those up beforehand and then you don't have to worry about it when you go to set this to cut out whatever it is you designed it will already all be in there and just save you a little bit of hassle as you create each new file that brings us to the end of the first lesson on just how to set up your project inside of Carbide Create. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, got some value out, out of it, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. And we're going to continue this series uh, over the next few weeks. And so hopefully by the end, you'll have a pretty good understanding of how to use Carbide Create and how to make your first cut in uh, on your Shococo machine. So stay tuned, and we'll see you next time.